Hey friends, welcome to 15 Minute Free Thinking. Couldn't decide whether this would be a podcast or just be a video, so I decided to do both. And today's topic is lockdowns, COVID-19, and all that fun stuff that we're just sick of hearing about. It's just like pulling teeth talking about these things now. Now, I'm going to rewind about a year ago and say when this first happened, <laughs> it was about exactly a year ago, I remember talking with somebody saying pretty soon everyone will be wearing masks and they said it will never happen and, you know, here we are a year later. However, I never would have believed that we would have been so grossly incompetent to deal with this, at least in our nation. Now, I'm not here to point the finger at either party or a group of people or the scientists or the folks who uh, truly believed that lockdowns were the answer. I've looked at the statistics over the last year. I've looked at the numbers of lockdowns versus not lockdown. Uh, the numbers in California, say, versus Florida versus Dakota. Tried to compare climate, figure out exactly whether this thing is really as dangerous as they made it out to be. And I've come to the conclusion that it's indeed a real virus, of course, and I'm not going to even argue that point. But I remember back at the beginning when people were first saying that it's not even real, it's a hoax, and then eventually once it became real, they'd say it's just not as dangerous as it could be. At a certain point, you have to be able to agree with people who say, all right, we've gone too far. In other words, when this first happened at the very beginning, and they said, well, we're just going to lock down for a few weeks. My thought was this. If we can actually lock down for a few weeks, uh, the government can get tests together, start working on um, isolating cases, uh, doing a tracing system, whatever it might take in order for us to get over this. And then on top of that, make sure that the people are taken care of financially in the meantime. Then after a month or so, we could say, okay, let's get back to work. Let's get back to business. Unfortunately, we couldn't seem to uh, work together well enough to make that happen, but we also didn't know how virulent this really was, how bad this virus was and how bad it would get. And the number one thing we have to remember is in the beginning, it wasn't about stopping it or stopping deaths as much as not overloading or, or overburdening the healthcare system. So we did that. And we found out that the hospitals had plenty of room in the end. There were some cities and some areas where indeed they had to call in refrigerated trucks for morgues. And indeed, there are still a lot of people dying in California, a few hundred people a day. But let's put, put this in perspective. <clears throat> in one year, the average people, amount of people who die from heart disease in this country alone is about 650,000. That's two-thirds of a million people die from heart disease every year. And many of these... Uh, are preventable things that we could have better diets, not smoke, take care of ourselves, but it's not considered an emergency, naturally. But, and a lot of folks would say, well, we can't shut down the nation for that. No, of course not. But the amount of effort that has been put into locking us down and preventing people from opening their businesses during COVID uh, leads one to the conclusion, anyone who's paying attention, that Yes, it's a real virus, and yes, there was a time when we were unsure, and it may have been a threat, and it still is a threat. But also, yes, governments around the world are using this in order to dominate and control their populations. I think that the problem lies in places like California, where uh, people are forced to wear a mask under penalty of punishment. In some cities, it's $100 up to $500 for individuals. Um, up to $10,000 for businesses. There's one city in Cali, I don't remember if it, I think it's Anaheim, where your first charge is like $1,000 or $500 to $1,000 for your first offense of not wearing a mask. And this isn't just in places of business. This is anywhere in a public place. Now look, I wear a mask when I'm in the grocery store, out of respect. I keep my distance from people. But I also have my limits. I'm not going to wear my mask in the parking lot. I'm not going to wear my mask walking down the street or jogging or running or biking or anything that has to do with outdoor activity. No, you will not see me wearing a mask at the park. It's absurd. But if I'm around a large group of people, just out of respect, I do believe that masks can help prevent if they are combined with proper 
simple procedures like hand washing and distancing, which have been shown and are, I still do believe are beneficial to us. <clears throat> and I think we're going to see a lot of different behaviors over the many years. I don't want one of those behaviors to be just listening to what we're told. And even though I did support these, some of these measures, I never was a proponent of just following blindly what the government tells me. All of the information that I came out with was based on my research from epidemiologists, virologists. I read that book called Spillover, which laid out many different past epidemics, how they've been dealt with. And um, this didn't catch me by surprise. I've been waiting my whole life for an epidemic to come like this. Not like I was excited for it, but rather uh, aware that something like this would happen. However, uh, a simple, even if it is the highest they're saying, even if it's a 3% mortality rate, that's nothing. I mean, compared to some of these uh, viruses out there that can kill 60 to 100% of the patients that get it. But uh, this one just spreads more easily. There's a possibility that a huge, a huge, large portion of people have already been infected and just are unaware. It may have come and gone before we realized it. Who knows the full details? I can't look at it and say I know all the facts, but what I do know is this. Closing restaurants and schools is not solving the problem. Even statistically, in places where they have lockdowns in place, they have found that uh, the rates are a very slightly different. We're talking within like a percentage or point or two. So, um, which includes new cases and deaths. So, you're not really, uh, the whole point was to not overwhelm the hospitals. So, we've had a year to put in place many measures which people who uh, have disorders or uh, immune disorders or uh, are afraid and don't want to go out or people who are elderly and susceptible, they can stay at home. There, we have many different ways to do remote uh, work, remote discussions, and if people can choose whether or not that they want to go to work, choose whether or not they want to run their business, and choose whether or not they want to frequent those businesses. Having a restaurant open doesn't mean that the restaurant's forcing people to come in. These are people who have had a year to think about this and can come in on their own accord and choose if they want to sit down and eat and take a chance. When we're in the restaurant, you can take your mask off, eat your meal, like any other normal person at the table, um, you know, people have just had it. They're tired. We're all sick of it. They call it COVID fatigue, but really it's just anything fatigue. Anytime we're constantly inundated and bombarded with do this, do that, but there's no recourse, no results, you know, eventually we just uh, get bored with it. I guess I don't know what the solution is here. And I probably should have had some notes to talk about this because uh, last year when I first brought this up I had several different notes and ideas that I wanted to discuss, but I guess what I really wanted to just say was I don't, uh, I don't agree any longer with any types of lockdowns. And uh, I think that it's important for us to get back to our normal state of affairs as soon as possible for the very sake of people's mental health. The fact that people are panicking because they need human interaction. I mean, I can't wait to get back to concerts. I'm really excited this summer to go back to concerts. And uh, that human interaction, it really is important. And fear really is a killer. And stress is a killer. And uh, it's just been too long. We know what we're up against. We should be able to decide for ourselves. And uh, businesses should not be prevented from opening up. And I do believe that schools should open up as well. And that's, those are my thoughts today on it. So let me know your thoughts. And uh, thanks for listening. And I'll talk to you all next time.